Hi YouTube, it's uh, Dale Skidmore here. <coughs> Today I'm going to uh, start making a firebox. I've um, seen a few of them on YouTube and uh, seen a few people make them. I tend to make them out of um, thin stainless steel and such like. But all I've got here is a piece of checker plate that I got for something quite a few years ago. It's been hanging around for ages so I thought I might make one out of that. I've come up with some plans so I'll show you them now. I think there's a bit too much glare on the paper to be able to see it clearly but uh, I've drawn out uh, the side front and back and the base plate on, uh, on a piece of paper and I'm going to transfer that onto the checker plate which you can just see behind it and uh, cut it all out and uh, knock it together. It should all hold together with a couple of clips which I'm going to make out of some wire and uh, a couple of bits to go across the top for supporting the pot. So I'll uh, mark it all out and get back to you. Right, so now I've marked out the uh, back of the checker plate I sprayed some white primer on it so it makes it easier to see everything and mark it up. That will burn off once um, you get the fire going in it for the first time. So now I'm going to cut it all out. I've used a uh, tapered hole cutter which is in stepped up in two, two millimeter increments to drill out the holes for uh, ventilation and then to cut out the feed hole for the front of the box I've drilled some holes at the corners and I've used a I think it's called a coping saw this one or it might be a jigsaw this one and cut them out cut out by hand close to the line and using a board with a slot in it which um, you then cut on the pull as well you set the the blade so that it cuts on the pull and it holds the work down onto that piece of wood, a bit of plywood, to give you a nice steady platform for cutting. Jewelers use this sort of thing all the time and in fact I've set all of my uh, hacksaws and any other fret saw type thing that I use to cut on the pull because it's the, the blades the blade just cuts much better because you're always tightening it up rather than slackening it. I think when I was at uh, when I was an apprentice, we were all all the hacksaws were set so that they cut on the push, and it's never very accurate. The saw wanders all over the place, so I've set everything I have to cut on the pull. It's a much better system. So I've drilled the holes for ventilation in the front, and the bottom row of holes will take the steps castellations on that piece there which is the base plate. I've now got to just do the rest of the holes and cut the slots in uh, the sides so that it all fits together. And then a bit of fitting with a file and then I'll be ready to make myself a brew. I'll come back to you later. It's all been tidied up and uh, got some wires, some old welding rods they are, for the, to pin the sides together and uh, just temporarily on the top there to hold the pot which is uh, something else I made out of an old tea caddy and uh, go outside now and try it shall we.
Right, so uh, I've chopped up some wood and I'm going to get the fire going now. I'm going to start it with a bit of cotton wool and birch bark and then bang in some fire st uh, feather sticks and uh, some uh, wood I've just chopped up. Also, I'm going to try a cone, a pine cone. I think some of the paint's starting to burn off now, primer. <clears throat> That's why it's burning a bit of black smoke at the moment. Yeah, that's cool. Right, whilst we're waiting for that to uh, 
to get going. I'm going to set up and uh, show you the, the knives that I've made and have a quick talk about them whilst we're waiting for the, for the fire to build up. Well there's the, uh, the knives that I've made. There is one missing from the collection so far because uh, I gave the second one I made to my brother. Um, it was rather like an extended version of the first knife I made. So uh, I'll just move you in closer and have a look at each one in turn. You've seen me use them to chop up the wood earlier on and uh, I've used them on some of my other videos as well and there's some projects for the future. Earlier on in the year I uh, watched a lot of uh, pr videos on YouTube about knife making and uh, I uh, was inspired by these videos to actually have a go myself and uh, one of the, uh, the videos I most liked was uh, Sandy from Jack Law Knives. I watched his from his very first attempt at making a knife and seen what he's built up over the, the last couple of years and uh, is incredible but um, I like to have a go at things myself and this one was made from a piece of uh, iron. All of these really are made from iron or mild steel rather than high carbon steel but uh, they do hold a surprisingly good edge. They've been tempered um, with oil and then, um, what's it, I can't remember what it's called now, where you put it in the oven and, and you reheat it again to uh, take away some of that temper. And uh, they hold a good edge. This is a, really a, just a, a batoning blade for chopping through firewood. It works quite well. It's a stubby little thing, but that was all I had available at the time. I did know that uh, somewhere in my garage also was a piece of angle iron which um, I looked for for a while under all the junk and when I found it again I made knife number two and knife number three which you will come on to next. The pattern you can see is a piece of 0.8mm uh, birch ply um, which I've used to make a template up so that I can always reproduce the knife if any um, anyone wants one or if there's an opportunity to make another one with a piece of steel comes along. So I've always got a record of the, uh, the blade. So I'll get on to number two now. Right, so number two is an extended version of the first blade which you can see from those two. It's a bit like a smaller, shorter version of a British Army survival knife or the MOD survival knife which uh, I bought later on just to sort of compare what the, the steel was like compared to the ones that I've made. And as I say, this was a piece of angle iron. This is number th knife number three. And this piece of angle iron I cut down into the two pieces and made knife number two and knife number three from it. So all three knives so far were made from a uh, six mil or quarter inch plate. And I triple tempered them uh, in oil and then uh, I really can't remember what that uh, next process is, but you you uh, take some of the temper away to make them a bit softer so you can carry on working them and put an edge on them. Um, and it's sharp, they've all been sharp enough to cut paper with and uh, I quite enjoy using this one. I prefer the sort of squarish handle rather than the shaped in coke bottle sort of style handle. It just sort of fits my hands nice and you get a nice amount of leverage and twist with it for splitting wood and of course you can carve feather sticks. Today it's a bit cold, you saw me carving them earlier on, it was a bit cold on my fingers so I didn't really uh, make much of a, a job of it really. But uh, it's a nice knife to use and from that I developed the next knife you're going to see and which is a slightly thinner or a slightly narrower blade and um, I quite like that one as well but unfortunately you'll see when I show it to you that it wasn't the best of um, jobs. Right so this is the fourth blade and this was made from a piece of uh, flat iron from B&Q and unfortunately even though it was triple tempered like the uh, other knives it proved to be very soft. It was a good chopper and uh, I got it really sharp but the blade 
didn't hold an edge it actually sort of chipped in a few places and also I found that it was very soft and bent quite easy because it had chipped I hammered it into a piece of wood with a couple of free blows and then and just bent the tip over I've re-straightened it again but it really isn't uh, very good it's quite disappointing really so it's uh, as wobbly as anything and I quite liked it as well it seemed to work really well for carving and such like but where's it gone there we are unfortunately it's a rubbish piece of iron I've got an old file I bought from a uh, uh, they buy junk and sell antiques place which I'm going to take all the temper out of on the on the fire and uh, and shape that I'm going to make a, another one of these knives and uh, that should be better because it is proper tool steel obviously and all the sheaths are made from an old satchel and an old handbag that uh, that uh, we had in the uh, in the cupboards upstairs and um, just sewn together with a bit of wax string I use a fork for marking out the stitch um, points the way you, and then drill the holes through with a, a fine drill it's uh, nice and cheap and cheerful I think it'll appeal to to people that uh, it's all done on the shoestring but um, I'll get on to the, uh, the next knife now. I like this one a lot. It's a nice little uh, camp knife, sheath knife. It's, um, I think, it's about four mil thick. And uh, again, it's from a piece of um, iron that I got from B&Q. It's only about three or four quid for a, a, long, a meter long length. So I've got plenty if I uh, want to make any more. I don't want to actually turn it into a, a business or anything like that it's just uh, I like the process of it I work with wood for the rest of the time so uh, working with metal for a change is, uh, is quite nice to do it's a lot harder to work with metal but um, it's quite good fun I get to do stuff I wouldn't normally do you know with setting up a forge here behind me in the barbecue area with my compressor and charcoal and all that and I've made uh, the scales out of black walnut and ash veneers which I uh, made a former for to give it a wavy when it was glued together they, they were glued together so it's all wavy and then I flattened it out on the sander and you end up with a nice pattern on the handle on the scales which I quite like doing that was quite nice to do never done anything like that before and uh, then the next one is a little neck knife I made which you'll see in a second that was made from a a marking knife, a woodworker's marking knife, which I bought for 50p at uh, a jumble sale, and uh, I've just reshaped the hand, the uh, the blade on the grindstone on grinding wheel, and uh, sharpened it up, and it's a nice little camp knife for doing little quick tasks that you need to do. A lot of people have neck knives, and uh, I can see why because it's a handy little thing to have for opening up your steak packets and all that sort of stuff and it's uh, it's good for striking the ferro rod as well and uh, yeah it's nice nice to have one very simple right we've come to the boil so I'm gonna make me coffee now
don't even think I needed the uh, gloves on to take the lid off then. So I've got the coffee done. I might uh, chuck some more wood on there just to burn the primer off which I use to uh, make it easier to see to mark up to cut out. So it was all done, I don't know how many hours probably all together because I was sort of did a bit here and a bit there over the last three days. So I think probably about four or five hours maybe. All, you, all but four of the holes were drilled with one drill bit and that was the tapered drill bit. So it went from four millimetres to 20 millimetres. So I was able to drill all the holes with that. And uh, then there's four three mil holes which take the wires, which you probably can't see on that hold the sides together. Yeah, you can, you just about make them out. And then these bits of wire here, they're just other bits of welding rod, which obviously are a bit soft because that's just, that's sort of warped a bit now but I'll uh, think of a some way of putting something across there maybe something a bit more a thicker wire or something to um, hold the pot but I think it will all fold flat and go in the pack we're gonna go out some somewhere I've <laughs> been watching lots of films about people's stoves now since I got the wood gas stove and uh, I think I've probably turned into a, a stove collector as well. Who knows? Right, I'm going to enjoy my coffee and uh, I've got a couple of more little bits to show you for the knife making. If the seagulls are not going to make it, uh, too much noise and you can hear me still, what you see in front of you now in the middle of the picture is a piece of Damascus steel, which um, I've got just recently. And behind that is a piece of mild steel and in front of that is the file I've already chopped the end off it it's wider than most files I've ever seen and it's a quarter inch thick but it tapers down to the flat end and uh, I think I'll try making a taper tang with that and the templates are for a big one sort of like the big a big chopper stroke cookery sort of shape and then the other two templates I'm not entirely sure exactly the same blade shape but the handle shapes are different I'm in two minds as whether to do a coke bottle shape handle or carry on with the um, the more squarey shape that I uh, have done on the other knives um, the scales of which have all been in oak apart from the one that's uh, in walnut and um, ash veneer but uh, they're future projects I think once we get a month or two's time once the weather starts to warm up a bit it will be easier to set up the forge out here all I do is pile up a load of bricks I've got here for the rocket stove and um, pump air in from a compressor and uh, you can get the, the heat up to the required 800 and odd degrees so that the metal stops being magnetic so you can plunge it into the oil so there's no problem with building up the temperature and uh, I shall uh, probably do a video on these things as uh, as the projects come up so um, you'll have to keep them peeled for them but it is very uh, very interesting thing to do and uh, you know to be able to do something like this with uh, just minimum of equipment you know it's quite uh, frankly, I'm quite pleased with so I'm going to enjoy my coffee now and uh, we'll see you soon YouTube thanks for watching and for your comments uh, I can't do any shouts out now because I haven't actually prepared them but I've got a whole list of people I'd like to shout out to so I'll probably do that in a forthcoming video back in the woods see you soon Cheers YouTube.